welcome back to my mom life if you're new here welcome i'm jordan and today i'm showing you how to make a full meal in the ninja foodie i'm making a meatloaf mashed potatoes and carrots all at the same time let's get started these are all of the ingredients you're going to need to make this meal i'll start over here i have about two pounds of peeled and diced potatoes i have some baby carrots here. I'm going to use about half of this bag. I have one cup of chicken broth that I made using this better than bouillon. I don't have a carton of chicken broth on me. So when I need chicken broth and I don't have any, that is what I do. You will need some salt and pepper. I have a quarter cup of cracker crumbs or you could use bread crumbs. You're going to need one egg, one pound of lean ground beef, some Worcestershire sauce, some ketchup, and I have garlic powder, paprika, pepper, salt, and dried parsley. I will have the measurements for everything in the description box below. The first thing that I am doing is getting the meatloaf ready. So you're going to add your egg in with your ground beef, and then I am going to add in some Worcestershire sauce, or however you say that. <laughs> and I just kind of add a good a splash of it um, you can measure it if you want and I will put a measurement in the description box for you and then I added in the cracker crumbs those are just saltine crackers that I crushed up and then all of our spices now we are just going to go in there with our hands because it's the best way to mix it up it's gross I don't like doing it but it's the easiest way to do it so I'm just going to mix it up until everything is nice and combined and then I will shape it into a loaf. Once you have the meatloaf mixed up and ready to go, you're gonna make a pan like this one out of tin foil. And I just shaped it like this and I'm gonna spray it just to make sure that nothing sticks. I'm sure it wouldn't stick, but I always spray everything because I've had disasters happen with things sticking. And then I am just going to take the meatloaf and place it on this tin foil pan that I made and kind of make sure that it's shaped nice like a meatloaf should be. And yeah, that's all for getting the meatloaf ready. So I washed my hands really good, don't worry. And then now I'm going to throw everything else into the pressure cooker pot. So. I sprayed it again just to make sure nothing sticks. It probably wouldn't, but it never hurts. And then I'm gonna add half of my bag of carrots and then um, I'm kinda gonna keep those on one side and then add the potatoes on the other side. That way um, they're just separated and they don't, um, you know, it's easier for me to get them out of the pot that way at the end. So I put all of my veggies in and then I'm going to place the wire trivet that my pressure cooker came with on top of the vegetables. And you're going to try, you're gonna to have to work here and get the feet of the trivet underneath all of the vegetables and make sure that it's on the bottom of the pot level just so that everything sits nicely in there and the lid shuts correctly. Now what I'm doing is I am seasoning the vegetables with salt and pepper and this is just to taste and you can always season them more at the end which I do with the potatoes um, but I'm just going to salt and pepper them and then pour the chicken broth over. You could do this before you put the trivet in but I just found that it was easier to do it after. That way you can get your hand down in there and work with the potatoes and carrots to get that trivet even, sitting even on the bottom of the pot. Now that everything is in there, I'm going to place the meatloaf on the trivet and I'm gonna to top it with ketchup. Um, we don't like a ton of ketchup on our meatloaf, so I just kind of do what we like. You can always add more. Some people put barbecue, and I have done this, put barbecue sauce on top and that is delicious. Um, but today I was trying to keep it traditional for this video and just use ketchup. So I'm gonna squirt some ketchup on there and then I will spread it out 
with a little spatula and then we're ready to start cooking. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid on my pressure cooker and make sure that my valve is set to seal. And then we are going to cook this on high pressure for 20 minutes. After that 20 minutes is up, you're going to let your pressure cooker sit and natu naturally release pressure for five minutes. And then we will go ahead and vent the rest of the pressure. So now you see that the timer is counting up from five minutes. So I am going to go ahead and release the rest of the pressure. And then once all of that pressure is released, we can open our lid. When you open your lid, it's gonna be very hot and there's gonna be a lot of steam. Um, and you see me trying to, or actually moving the meatloaf with my hands, which is not smart. I don't recommend that. Um, but my pot holders were just not doing it. So I used my fingers and then you're gonna use the um, pot holders and take the metal trivet out. And I just tested to make sure that the Vegetables were tender and done cooking, and then I just removed them from the pot. And I'm gonna remove my potatoes and put them in one bowl and put my carrots on another dish. You could serve this just like this. You do not have to mash the potatoes. The potatoes and carrots cooked together are delicious. Um, just taste them for seasoning and you could serve it that way. Uh, for the video's purpose, I wanted to make mashed potatoes to show you that it's super easy to have a meal with mashed potatoes and meat, and my husband loves mashed potatoes anyways, so I knew that he would like it if I mashed them. So that is why I did it this way, but you could serve it just like this, and it would be delicious. Now that all of the vegetables are out of the pressure cooker pot, I am going to put my trivet back in, but the other way. So I'm gonna flip it the other way so that it sits lower in the pot. And I'm gonna put my meatloaf back in. This is totally optional, but I like to kind of crisp up the um, meatloaf, meatloaf a little bit and brown it up a little bit more. So I'm gonna put it on broil on my Ninja Foodie and I'm just gonna watch it. It doesn't have to stay in there for the full 10 minutes. And while it is doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and mash up my potatoes. I just like to put in some butter and cream cheese, a little bit of milk and salt and pepper. You can make them however you like them. And that's pretty much it. You're just gonna let the meatloaf brown up a little bit more. Like I said, that's completely optional, but that's how I like to do it. And you're ready to serve. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps my channel and I really appreciate the support. If you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe and stick around and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.